Hi, my name is Klaver and I'm sailing on EF language and I'm a trimmer. I will welcome you to the Sydney Stopover Report. Our third stopover report brings you a recap of Leg 3, unique interviews, stopover news and up-to-date scoreboards. The third stopover was in Sydney, a city that hasn't hosted the Whitbread fleet since the first race in 1973-74. The glamorous city with its world-famous landmarks, the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge boasts one of the world's most beautiful natural harbours. The Whitbread fleet could enjoy celebrating Christmas in the high summer climes of the Southern Hemisphere. Leg 3 of the 97-98 Whitbread Round the World Race stretched 2,250 nautical miles from Fremantle via the Great Australian Bight to Sydney. It was a hot and sunny afternoon in Fremantle as the cannon sounded the starting signal to the nine Whitbread 60 boats. With a good 22 knot breeze behind her, after 15 minutes, EF Language, number two overall, took the lead with their yellow 300 square meter spinnaker, just ahead of Merritt Cup with Grant Dalton, who badly needed a top position in this leg. One hour into the race, however, Swedish match winners of leg two overtook Merritt Cup, but with EF Language still maintaining their lead. Things hadn't worked out quite right, however, in the very tactical start for the girls on EF education and they found themselves next to last after an hour. But they were later to prove that they are to be taken as serious competitors in this race. And bringing up the rear was no other than the overall leader, Innovation Kerner. Now the fleet had to tack its way down along the western coast of Australia, something that was to spell serious trouble for Norway's Innovation Kerner. Twelve hours after the start, the crew found dents and buckles developing in the lower part of a mast, caused by excessive compression in the upwind conditions. Immediate action had to be taken and the boat went close to the coast to pick up a repair kit. This spectacular operation cost Innovation Kverner 25 minutes, but she was soon fit for fight again. However, Leg 3 had some more nasty surprises in store for the Norwegian boat. There was little separating the boats as they rounded Cape Lewin, but as the fleet sailed into the Great Australian Bight, it split into a north-south configuration, each boat striving to reach supposed low-pressure areas. But this was a leg where the weather wouldn't be predicted, with every change of direction by one skipper leaving the other wondering what lay behind their competitor's new move. Innovation Kverner and Brunel Sunergy, with its new skipper Roy Heiner, took a dive to the south while the other boats stayed north. The lead shifted between EF Language, Toshiba and Swedish Match in the north group. As you might remember, the girls on EF Education started a duel with Grant Dalton on Merritt Cup on leg two. Well, on day five in this leg, they had visual contact with Merritt Cup again and the chase was on. Okay, here we have Merritt Cup. He's smoking along with the spinnaker up there in 12 knots in there on the other tack with the hexel up. They're probably not very happy at the moment. We've just gained eight miles in the last hour. After four days of close racing, EF Education and Merritt Cup were approaching King Island at the entrance to Bass Straits. A 25 knot northeasterly breeze seemed to force the boats to make a tack to round Cape Wickham. But fortunately, in fact very fortunately as it would turn out later, the wind shifted and allowed EF Education to pass the Cape without having to tack. While tidying up the hull yards, the girls found out that the leeward check stay appeared to be out of the rig. A closer inspection revealed a serious problem with both the starboard runner and top mast as they both had become detached from the rig. If the girls had tacked, they would definitely have lost the rig. After a hazardous repair operation, the girls were on the move again, now as last boat in the fleet, because they'd lost more than 20 miles to the other boats in the operation. But they diverted the major disaster of losing the rig. Swedish Match also encountered mast problems, almost identical to the problems on Innovation Kverner earlier on in the leg. 